Republicans in Canada have thought about suicide. Over one half. We will be louder. We will be louder. reported this. We cannot wait. They cannot wait. LGBTQ2S students cannot push pause on their lived experiences of unsafety and violence while we learn more details. They cannot. They need safety now. They need to know that they matter now. They need to know that they are of value and worthy of belonging now. marriage equality in Canada, before gender identity and expression was protected under our Ontario Human Rights Code, before the age of Tinder, Facebook and other avenues students are accessing online, and before social movements such as Me Too to put an end to sexual violence. This repeal is more than just fulfilling a promise from a cheap shot at gaining votes but is also a violation of our human rights and our concern for children's and students' safety. Regardless, regardless of what the Minister of Education decides which curriculum teachers will use, teachers have an ethical obligation to ensure that students' development and safety needs are met. Yes. But we also wouldn't be here today if not for the confusion, drama, and flip-flopping of the provincial yeah. government. Yeah. Yeah. And three years ago, I remember clearly seeing on television a crowd as large as this right here at Queen's Park. But it was a different crowd. It was a crowd whipped up by radicals, the fringe elements of society. I watched as radicals manipulated entire immigrant communities into fake outrage. They purposely targeted each and every culture's weaknesses for a disgusting purpose, and I watched as my Chinese community was manipulated into hating the new and modern, modern sexual education curriculum. And radicals like Tanya Granick Allen spread oh. false information, false information on flyers and online to create the immense hatred that led to this repeal. Three years ago, radicals spread fake news that brought us to where we are today. Five years ago, me and Britea's mom, Leah, 
buried our child when she was 17 years old. 17 years old, and Rotea made a decision that rather than continue to live with everything that had happened to her, the best option would be to say goodbye. And we would do anything in the world to bring her back. And we would do anything in the world to go back in time with Ontario's 2015 curriculum and make sure with all our strength and all our might that, that was going to be taught in the schools of Nova Scotia. I have absolutely no doubt in my mind, no question at all, that Retea's life would have turned out a lot different had consent been taught in school when she was growing up. Um, it'd be easier, I think, if I could uh, just stand here and go over all the reasons that uh, it's wrong to cancel a curriculum, but it's made an awful lot harder when the Ford government continuously changes the goalposts. Yeah. I just read a couple of days ago um, in the Toronto Star and on Twitter, it was passing around, that uh, the reason the curriculum has been cancelled had nothing to do with the content, it had to do with the process. And that's just another lie coming out of the government, and it's completely dishonest. So you gotta always ask right off the bat, if Doug Ford believes what he's doing is right, why can't he be honest with it and about it with the people in Ontario? You know, the updated health curriculum, we all know, is crucial, crucial to our kids. And Doug Ford, as I said, is absolutely wrong, absolutely wrong to rip up that curriculum and drag us back, drag Ontario back to the previous century, to 1998. You know, and as, as mothers and, and fathers and teachers and students, educators, we are demanding better from this Premier. People, as, as people, we are saying to Doug Ford, stop catering to a tiny group of social conservatives. Stop putting your backroom deals ahead of the safety of Ontario students. Here's the thing. We cannot leave these massive responsibilities up to individual people. We need the system behind us. when kids spent two years bullying her for her sexuality. They grew, up thinking, they grew up thinking that being gay was wrong and our school board never taught them otherwise. I can't even count the number of non-binary and trans friends who needed that curriculum so they could have given a name to what they were feeling so much earlier so that they wouldn't have felt alone and scared and confused for so many years of their lives. How could the curriculum created before MySpace teach them anything they needed to know about the internet? It can't. I can go through my blocked list on Instagram and I can show you 284 boys who needed that curriculum to teach them the meaning of the word no. Woo! 